flip the pages of my life. Every line that I write as I make history. You can see me. You can see me. You can see me. One of the most sultry, soulful voices of all times that landed her jobs at nightclubs from as early as age 13. Her first big break at age 17 where she was added to LA cast of hair. Her life is a testimony. She is one of the most phenomenal women in gospel music. Let's welcome to the centerfold Grammy Award nominated music minister chart topping stellar award soul train award dove award winning <laughs> she brought us songs like sea of forgetfulness victory more than a friend let's welcome to open book center full the beautiful dr helen baylor you are a minister of the gospel you were hand chosen by god to talk to his people and in the middle of you know in the middle of all your ministry and, and reaching, your husband decided that he did not want your marriage anymore. Hmm. Share that experience with us. That was, that was a difficult time. I think I always, not always, but toward the end, I felt something, that I felt a struggle there. I mean, I realized that it, it's hard to be married to a woman that is in the forefront yeah. and and that sometimes it's a problem, a challenge mm -hmm. for men to accept yeah. their wives in that role. And I, I wasn't the 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 most um amenable person to be around, you know what I mean? I had a lot of pressure. I had a lot that I needed to do and and sometimes I would take it out on him. So I think after thirty years he just felt like, you know, I don't have, I don't know how much longer I have on this earth, but I want to be selfish now, right. which is quite all right. Mm -hmm. And I love him dearly. I love how you deal with it, though. I pray for him. Oh, I've been, I've been there. I've been in the shouting matches and the hanging up of the phone and the whole bit. But God has released me yeah. from that, and yeah. we're cordial. Mm -hmm. uh, he knows that I pray for him. If I need anything, you know, if I need him to send me something, some mail or some things that he may still have in his possession, and he goes, oh, yeah, 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 I got that, then he'll send it. Mm -hmm. I want our relationship to um, represent Christ yes. to our children. Yes. I don't really care what people think. Important. Okay. I Very only important. care, only care what God thinks of me mm -hmm. and how my children are affected by our separation, which is, was very hard for the youngest son. But uh, we've made it through that, mm -hmm. and we're um, victorious now, victorious, and I have no uh, hard feelings or anything. It was just hard when it happened. Yeah. Um, yesterday at the conference, mm -hmm. you shared something um, about your managers rubbing you. How did you deal with that? Wow. Like they're Christians. Yes, yes. Well, you know what I mean. You know, the yes. enemy, the enemy. We have an enemy. As a yes. believer, mm -hmm. I know I have an enemy. Yes. And when I'm doing something for the Lord, just like anybody else that's working for God, that's really making a difference, yeah. and my music was making a difference, well, the enemy will use people that are closest to you. And so being management mm -hmm. and um, people um, that were scheduling and, and um traveling with me. He would use those people to get to me. Yeah. And um, I hate that it happened. Mm -hmm. But after a while, I got tired of praying about the same thing. Mm -hmm. So I had to just release them and let them go. So I managed myself for a couple of years. That was crazy. Well, I would imagine. <laughs> OK, re returning phone calls and uh, keeping schedules, uh, flights and um, rehearsals and um, you know, uh, return calls and, and trying to decipher through who was real and who was not. I um, was blessed yeah. just recently with new management. Yes. And it's a whole new um, season in my life. 
I um, had two albums that started my gospel career off that actually uh, both of the albums were nominated for Grammys. My very first one was highly recommended. It stayed on the charts, on the Billboard charts for over a year, and it stayed at number one for 27 weeks. So God was doing something with that album, highly recommended. The next album was to look a little closer. And my producer of those two records, John Bukowski Jr., now is my manager. And he is awesome. He was always a genius to me. Yeah. But after all these years, he still does music and still produces and writes and all that. But he has a, um, a vision and yeah. a heart and a mind for organization. And God sent him to me. I prayed. Let me tell you, Khadijah, I prayed and said, God, send me somebody. I can't, I can't talk to nobody else on the phone. I can't, I can't schedule another date. Help me, I'm losing my mind. Well, guess what? He sent back my first producer, he and his wife. I am so happy. Come to, on now. To, 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 you know, having met you. Oh. He is really an amazing person. He's and, amazing. And God has a way of setting his children up, yes. you know, fixing them up for each other, yes, you know. Yes. And I am so happy that he sent Johnny away. Yes. And my way too. <laughs> yes, yes. He's a blessing. Yeah, he is really, really He's good. a blessing. And tonight you'll get to hear him, you yes. know, if you come back tonight. Yeah, he and I have a little segment in the um, concert. Where Excellent. it's just he and I. Excellent. Hard question. Yes. How do you feel about superstar and gospel music minister in the same sentence? Well, if you're a superstar and you're shining for Jesus, mm -hmm. it's quite all right. High five. Come on. High five. You can be grand, but be humble at yeah. the same time. Yes. Yes. You know, so that's quite all right with me. Just be careful what you say. You know what I mean? In your songs. Mm -hmm. And be careful how you... You know, diva, now yeah. that's another term oh, wow. I don't like. Yeah. <laughs> because it, you know, connotes uh, you, you negativity. Know, you, and, you know some of my guys call me a diva? You're not a diva. <laughs> you're just a beautiful, beautiful, charismatic woman of God. Remember last night when, I, when we were uh, having yeah. prayer yeah. and I came through yeah. and you and I connected. Yeah. Because I, I went with my um, my neighbor, the same neighbor I was telling you about, because okay. she came up for prayer and I said, nah, I can't just sit here and let her go on her own. Oh. You know, and it's like, you just immediately, so I thought at that point, okay, she remembers me from Tobago. No. No, it was just a connection, <laughs> and yeah. I did not know that you were the Kadisha. Yeah. So that was awesome. That yeah, was, was really very special. <clears throat> what are some of the things we can look forward to from Dr. Hallelujah. Okay. Okay. Well, just to, I just want to say a little bit about that. Mm -hmm. People don't have to call me doctor. I know, they, but know, it was fun to but do. But it's, it's 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 pretty cool. Yeah. I use it when I need to. Hey. It's an honorary doctorate mm -hmm. given to me by um, Friends International University, mm -hmm. and uh, in sacred music, and it's based on my life experience. So when I need to drop Dr. <laughs> Helen Baylor. I, I, I can do that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But um, I forget your question, but I know you're going to bring me back around to it again. <laughs> what can we look forward to? Anyway, okay, yeah, yes, yes. I, I heard about okay. the film and, and yes. um, this. Oh, this, this, is, this is very, I'm very proud of this. Mm -hmm. Very proud. This is the Helen Baylor the Legacy Years Celebrate the Experience. And what we did on this CD, I really like it. It's one of John's ideas, and I think mm -hmm. it's perfect. It's very nice. Look at that. Hey, that, that Hollywood. <laughs> okay, we, we put songs together that are fans' favorites. Yeah. Songs that over the years that the fans will not let me leave the stage without singing. Mm -hmm. Then we put together a list of my songs yeah. that I like that maybe the audience doesn't know about. And then we put some tidbits in here of how uh, some very cool things happened mm -hmm. um, during the recording of these songs. One I'll share with you really quick. Yeah. We were in the studio on one of the songs called There Is No Denying, and we were singing background. And after we sang our background, we went out to listen to the track and see how it went and feel the vibe. But at the end of the song, there were angels singing angels sing 
You hear me? Yeah. There were voices that were up in the stratosphere that no one, most of us were altos and tenors, no one could sing those notes. They were otherworldly. They were like out of this oh, world. Wow. And so we, we hustled around and tried to, yes, tried to figure out if this was some kind of harmonic situation, technical. Mm -hmm. No, we all came to the conclusion that the angels were singing with me. If you listen to There Is No Denying, I bet you'll tweet me or Facebook me and let me know you heard them. Yeah. Even children hear the angels sing. It's right at the very end of the song, at that final note. And that was validation for me and all the singers that were there because we had all had similar um, deliverances from substance and, and lifestyles that were not godly. So that was just validation for all of us. So this is a good CD. And we're not going to be doing it much longer. So if you want to get it, I, I think it I'm would buy my today. be a good idea. Because <laughs> it's just a commemorative commemorative type of um, put together. And we've got some cute stories in there as well. So um, Can we just touch quickly on the film, A Praying Grandmother? Well, I don't think we should. Okay. So because of some other legal things, so okay, we'll no just problem. skip over that. Okay. It's n nothing bad. No, I understand. Okay. I understand. Okay. But we are doing it. But it's just. Oh, oh. So what happened is that you want me to star in it, so you know you just shut yes, down. Yes, I can. You, can you play me? I think I could. I will study you, and I will you, do that. Okay. All right. All right. That'll work. I'll just That'll need work. to get vocal training though, because <laughs> that's part of my what is your greatest fear? My greatest fear? Mm -hmm. hmm. My greatest fear. Wow, that's really a hard one. I am a very sensitive person, always have been mm -hmm. very sensitive. My, I, I think my greatest fear is not pleasing my father, mm -hmm. um, offending the Holy Spirit. Uh, sometimes I try too hard uh, to get people to like me. And um, I'm fearful of when things don't work out that I'm going to flip and, and show you some sisterhood. You know what I mean? Yeah. That kind of thing. But my greatest fear is not, is not living my life the way he planned for me to. I don't want to get to heaven and he shows me all the things that I could have done that I didn't do. So my next question is, what would you like to accomplish, you know, before you leave this age? And Phoebe's heart. Yes, Phoebe's heart. Come to mind one time. Phoebe's heart. You know what? To be honest with you, I believe that I had been, have and had been, that God has put, had put on my heart mm -hmm. years ago to pastor. Mm -hmm. But I didn't obey that call. And I, I find myself pastoring in a, I use that word mm -hmm. uh, in quotes, lots of musicians and singers and mentoring and loving them. And lots of people by the spirit call me pastor. Mm -hmm. um, I was studying, I'm not a pastor. I was studying uh, the Bible one day and I read in Romans 16 where Phoebe, a woman of God that was over Paul, not over him, but a very instrumental in Paul, the Apostle Paul's ministry. And the Apostle Paul spoke to everyone and said, support her. Mm -hmm. She's doing a lot. She mm -hmm. is doing a lot. And whatever she needs, give it to her. And I said, wow, that's what I want to do. I want to be like Phoebe. You know, even though she was a woman, she was highly respected by Apostle Paul. And um, that's why we call the, the uh, nonprofit organization that we've just started, we call it Phoebe's Heart. Because I want to bring women together of uh, the same mind, uh, women of excellence that yeah. will come together and help. To be a part of that. Amen. We're calling the troops. Yeah. We're calling in the yeah. women because it's, no, it's time out for playing church. Yeah. We've yep. got to go yep. and minister yep. uh, fully and with a whole heart yep. to women and men that are hurting. And I want to use Phoebe as my role model. If Paul thought she was all that, <laughs> yes. then I think I can do yes. pretty good. So I'm hoping that the listeners will look us up 
uh, phoebesheart.org and find out more information about it because we're bringing together an army of men and women. It's not just women, but people that will go out and minister on the streets, come out from out, come out of the four walls and go to the gas stations, go to the grocery store, go to the homes for unwed mothers, go to prison, take a, a child to see her mother in prison. I mean, these are the things that we're going to do, and we're going to need a lot of help and a lot of prayer. Okay. So I have some quick questions for you. Okay. What is your favorite food, your favorite food you had in Trinidad so far? Okay, I had some awesome um, curry shrimp the other day, and I had some of that really good spinach. Mm. It was so good. <laughs> but when I'm at home, my favorite food is fried okra. Mm -hmm. Really? Yes. I love fried okra. Fried okra. Sa Sada roti. Mm -hmm. <laughs> What's your yes. favorite color? Favorite color right now this season in my life is orange. I go back and forth from like orange and reds, and then sometimes I'm in a pink mood. Right, like today. <laughs> yes, yes, sort of like, yeah. <laughs> Your favorite perfume? I just got a new one the other day. I'm not wearing it because I didn't buy it. It's called Modern Muse by mm -hmm. Estee Lauder. Sounds good. Ooh, it's modern, but it's, mm, <laughs> yeah, so when I get home, I'm going to get me some. Nice. Yeah. And final question. How would you like generations to remember you? That she loved the Lord, that Helen Baylor loved God, that she wasn't perfect, but she was transparent enough mm -hmm. so that um, she, she was never um, a fake mm -hmm. or phony, mm -hmm. uh, that she had issues, but she overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of my testimony. That's what I, I would want them to, to know and remember that Helen Baylor loved people yeah. and would do anything that she could to help people and that um, music is my safe place. That's you so my much. safe place. Thank You're you very so welcome. You doing this Thank up. you. Thank you, my love. Thank you. And we love you. I love I you love too. You. And I'll be back. I, I can't wait. Okay. <laughs> We're going to come back and do something on yes. Big Style. Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> Stay with us. We'll be right back.